So I made this little uh, sled, I guess you could call it, for the camera. Basically, I just took some layers of cardboard and stacked them up to build up the thickness of this platform here. Then I cut a groove where the bottom of the board sits in and I glued that in. And then I glued in this uh, back half of the camera so that the focus can still be rotated here at the front. And then I just attached another piece of cardboard here to which I just taped on the diffraction grating. So now I can put it into the box and you know easily adjust it and play around with the variables. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in the webcam. All right, so that's pretty cool. So here's the transmission. So if we're looking directly at the slit, I'm not sure what that the spots are. Some weird interference pattern. Anyway, um, then if we look at either side. We can see our diffraction, and then if we keep going, I don't know if you can see that, but there's that light green and red, and that's probably the secondary diffraction there. And then there's the one on the other side. When we put it back to center, it looks pretty good. And so I'm going to go ahead and put it towards the back of the box here. The distance from the camera to the slit does make a bit of a difference uh, the separation between the lines becomes greater the further you get away from the slit and that can give you better sensitivity better resolution so you can see I'm kind of towards the end of the box here if I move it towards the slits everything comes closer together but the lines also get larger. You can also see, also see that kind of curvature that we get there when we're pretty close. So right now I'm about uh, three inches, three to four inches from the slit. And some of that could be because of the optics of the webcam itself. But anyway, we can move it back. And because we now have ability to focus while seeing the image, if we find a good spot here, it's not too bright, we can start focusing in. So you can see there it's getting more blurry. If I go in the other direction, it gets sharp and then blurry again. And actually what I'm going to do is use the peaks in the graph to help me find the best focal point. And that will be where I get the best resolution. So you'll see that peak in the green there start to get sharper, I think. Let's see. Yeah, so you see all those new peaks coming out. And same for that... Um, Terbium and mercury area in the yellow to orange region And then if I keep going further they start to get more broad and smoothed out as we lose Detail there So I don't even need to rely on the camera image. I can just use the data actually To find the best point which seems to be somewhere around Here I'm going to go ahead and uh, close it down to get rid of most of the stray light. And I'm just rotating the entire camera unit and you can see how it goes askew. Similar to the way that uh, tilting the slit affects it. So I guess in a way you could correct one of those with the other. Now, uh, generally you want to center your spectrum as far as the lines in the image go in the middle of it if you have it so it looks like this 
where maybe some of it, the red is being cut off, it's too far to the right. That means you've gone to a too shallow of an angle relative to the center line uh, in the spectrometer. And so you're cutting off the red and the IR. And then if you go in the opposite direction, maybe like closer to 20, uh, 45 degrees, then uh, you're cutting off some of the UV. But on the other hand, you have this large area extending into the IR. So if you had a detector that could pick that up, you could possibly use that to your advantage. If the lines on your spectral image are too close to the bottom or too close to the top, that means your relative position of the camera in respect to the slits is off. So if they're all the way at the bottom, that means that your camera is too high. So I can kind of simulate that for you guys here. It would look like that. And uh, I obviously can't do it too low. So just make sure you get the position such that the camera is ideally in the middle of the slits. Alright guys, there you go. I'm really happy with that. You can see that uh, 577, 578, 579, whatever that other peak is. You can clearly see those two resolved. So we're getting great sensitivity out of something that took, you know, half of a day to build. I think that's amazing. Really happy with how this turned out. The one thing that is missing here to make it a truly quantitative spectroscopic measurement is that the quantity of light, so the counts or the counts per second, aren't really being addressed. And like I was saying before, the limitations of the optics of the webcam, which seems to record kind of a more round image, uh, results in distortions of intensity. So the peak positions are spot on. Uh, you can see we went off of calibration here, so we can move that back. Uh, so the peak positions are exactly where you expect them to be once it's calibrated, but the relative intensity isn't quite correct. So I know that this red peak is normally pretty high, and then the green ones are kind of next, and this 436 one is really low. And I think what's happening is that the outer edges of the detector are being kind of exaggerated. And theoretically, you could compensate for this if you had a known standard curve. So you took the same exact lamp and measured it in, uh, you know, a laboratory grade setup or something like that, or got that data from somewhere. For example, I've measured this exact lamp on an ocean optics setup, so I can compare it to that and make adjustments per wavelength so that the graph is more representative of the reality. If you were to do that, then you could go even further and instead use a white LED so you have a really broad spectrum and you don't have any of these patches of no intensity and then you can make a really nice uh, wavelength dependent adjustment and you know maybe build it into the algorithm of a uh, software like this i think they have a developer version of uh, the Steramino software and where it could automatically adjust for the uh, wavelength dependence all right guys thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.